Sjogren's can be a very tricky condition to live with and oftentimes we think about dry eyes and dry mouth. But did you know that it can also affect the nervous system and your brain? So if you want to learn about the nervous system signs of Sjogren's, then you don't want to miss this video. Hey, welcome back. My name is Dr. Micah Yu, board certified integrative rheumatologist. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the specific signs of Sjogren's involving the nervous system that you don't want to miss. You're probably thinking, isn't Sjogren's just dry eyes and dry mouth? You are absolutely correct. It does have dry eyes and dry mouth. But the nervous system is also a crucial part of Sjogren's manifestation. And a lot of doctors often don't think about the nervous system signs of Sjogren's and they don't talk about it with their patients. That's why I am making this video so you're made aware of the neurologic signs of Sjogren's that you absolutely don't want to miss. And when they come up, at least you're aware that maybe these symptoms that you may be having are coming from Sjogren's. When I was first going through medical school, all I could think about was dry eyes and dry mouth and Sjogren's. I didn't really learn much about the nervous system signs of Sjogren's. And if I did, I didn't remember them that well. And oftentimes with a primary care doctor and possibly other doctors, they will also remember specifically the dry eyes and dry mouth and they won't remember the nervous system signs as much. And in my clinic, I will ask patients from head to toe what their symptoms are because I don't want to miss the nervous system signs of Sjogren's when patients come to me for referrals. So in this video, I'm going to be taking you step by step on the different neurologic manifestations of Sjogren's. So first, we're going to start off with peripheral neuropathy. That means the nerves and the extremities of your body are involved. And that can be different types of sensation that you might experience with the neurologic signs of peripheral neuropathy. And they can include sensory neuropathy. So what does sensory neuropathy even mean? And what are the symptoms of that? Patients can feel numbness, tingling, maybe a burning sensation on their arms and legs, or they can have an altered perception of temperature regulation on their skin, their hands and their feet. And when there is peripheral neuropathy, it can be important to distinguish between large fiber neuropathy and small fiber neuropathy because there could be potential changes in the treatment plan. And one way you can see a possible difference is by going to a neurologist and they can do something called an EMG which is a nerve conduction study that they do in the office. If you're living with Sjogren's and you are having increased tingling and numbness or maybe increased sensitivity to temperature, then this could possibly be a sign of Sjogren's progression. Another form of neuropathy in Sjogren's is called motor neuropathy. And when motor neuropathy, it can cause weakness, muscle atrophy, and difficulty with coordination. At first, the signs of muscle weakness can be pretty subtle, but then it could be more obvious over time and build up. And this can happen in particular the hands and feet. And over time, due to the weakness in the extremities, it can lead to muscle atrophy or muscle wasting. As far as difficulty with coordination, what I mean by that is that it could be troublesome in tying buttons or even writing can be challenging as well in more advanced cases. And because of difficulty with coordination, sometimes the balance can be off and patients can have an easier time falling with advanced nervous system involvement in Sjogren's. So in order to assess where there is some nerve damage or nerve involvement going on, the neurologist can do an EMG or a nerve conduction study, and both of them can be very useful in helping with diagnosis. Now, this next part of the talk is very important, so pay close attention. And it's involvement of the autonomic nervous system which controls many, many organs. And it has to do with the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system as well. With the autonomic nervous system involved, there can be many manifestations in many different organs. So one example is something called dysautonomia. 
and this is related to POTS. So some patients, when they have the autonomic nervous system involved, they can get something called tachycardia or a very fast heart rate. If you're experiencing dizziness with a very fast heart rate that can just spike up for no reason, and you're not tolerating heat that well, you could have something called POTS or some autonomic nervous system involving the vascular system. And that requires a visit to a neurologist or a cardiologist for diagnosis and treatment. And some patients with dysautonomia will be very intolerant to heat or cold temperature. So just be aware of that. Also, with the autonomic nervous system being involved, it can lead to difficulty swallowing because the GI tract is involved. It can also lead to something called gastroparesis, which is delayed stomach emptying, which can make it difficult to eat certain foods. Diarrhea, constipation, bloating can also happen if the GI tract is involved in Sjogren's. There can be difficulty with urination, and some men and women can have libido changes because of the neurologic manifestations of Sjogren's. One of the most serious manifestations and signs of the nervous system involvement is showing is something called mononeuritis multiplex. And this disease or condition usually can involve and show up as a wrist drop or a foot drop. And that's because the major nerves of the arms and the legs are very inflamed. And when that happens, it can cause that nerve to not work as well, resulting in that foot or wrist drop. And you can't really use those extremities until you maybe start steroids or go on immunosuppressant medications to get those back to normal. So I've seen that in the hospital myself in patients. They come in the emergency room and then we take them in up to a bed in the hospital. And then as a rheumatologist, I got consulted on these cases. And literally these patients, you, they can't extend their arms or especially their wrist and their ankle at the time when I saw them. So we've talked about the extremities and how the nervous system in the peripheries can be involved. But what about the central nervous system and the brain? That can be involved too in Sjogren's and it can get quite serious. So what are the signs and serious signs of the central nervous system being involved with Sjogren's? Well, patients can get confused. There can be a stiff neck, severe headaches, dizziness, weakness, visual changes as well can occur when the brain and the central nervous system are involved. So I have seen patients come in the hospital with a coma because Sjogren's did affect their brain. And some diagnoses that are involved with Sjogren's attacking the central nervous system include something called encephalitis, where the brain is severely inflamed. And that can lead to seizures, coma, and also confusion. And when that happens, you need to have strong steroids involved and also strong immunosuppressant medications to get rid of the inflammation. And that sometimes involves a lumbar puncture for diagnosis and an MRI as well. And sometimes you can also get CT scan of the brain. So it involves a whole workup. And when there is suspicion for encephalitis from Sjogren's, we also need to make sure that there's no infection causing similar symptoms as well, because that can happen. When we think about meningitis, we often think about bacterial meningitis. Meningitis can also occur from autoimmune diseases and Sjogren's can cause meningitis. And that's inflammation of the meninges which is a protective layer around the spinal cord and the brain. And when that happens, it can have headaches, a stiff neck, fevers, and also sensitivity to light. And that also involves strong steroids and immunosuppressive medications. Other strong, serious manifestations of the central nervous system in Sjogren's can be strokes and also something called transverse myelitis. And transverse myelitis is inflammation of the spinal cord. And I've seen this in the hospital myself in patients, and it's very, very serious. Patients can be paralyzed in certain parts of the body depending on what part of the spinal cord is involved. Some patients lose control of the bowel and bladder. They might be having problems holding their urine or holding their feces because there's a problem with the spinal cord there and they may not be able to walk. And I've seen patients improve with strong medications though. 
I don't mean to scare you with these nervous system signs of Sjogren's, but as you can see, Sjogren's is much more complicated than just dry eyes and dry mouth. And the nervous system signs of Sjogren's can be pretty simple and not that serious where you just have tingling and numbness in your extremities. But as you can see, it can be very deadly and dangerous when it involves the brain and, and patients end up in the hospital with a coma or they're paralyzed in a certain part of the body because of the inflammation. So I hope you've learned something from this video on the nervous system signs of Sjogren's. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it to a friend and family who need it because a lot of people need to learn about the symptoms of Sjogren's. Please hit the like button, comment below, and please subscribe to my channel so I can keep sharing this information to the world, to the people that need it the most. And don't forget to hit that notification sign so that you know when I produce my next video. I'm so happy that you could join me today. And I'll see you guys next time.